Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I know that over the past few weeks, I have gotten a few more subscribers. So welcome. Welcome to a channel where the weird and the wacky over here. But even though we're weird and wacky, most of the time we're we're right. You know? So, And I've got one of my weird and wacky friends with me. I'm sure you don't mind me saying that. Hillis, how are you today, Hillis? I'm good. You know, I've been in a space of uh, pondering, integration, all that good stuff, you know, because I I don't know what I can attribute my recent insights to. Uh, maybe it's a combination of things, but, you know, over the weekend, I did have a little private Muslim ceremony and uh, got some really interesting information. And at the same time, I was running a particular frequency on the Spooky 2 machine. It was real interesting and in, in just having a, a journey with that and then receiving those frequencies. You know, when you said that doing the shrooms to our new our new subscribers, we're also the fun channel, so <laughs> 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 we're the fun ones so um, i heard that joke once from leanne morgan where she was talking about she's a comedian she was talking about how her husband finished university in the appropriate amount of times but it, time but it took her five years because she's fun and i was like i was like I'm i love fun. that it took me five years because i'm fun <laughs> so <laughs> I love that too. But anyway, you guys, if you if you're new and you don't know what Hellas is talking about with the Spooky Two machine, quickly let me just show you the website. Um, Hillis and I are both sponsored by Spooky Two, as well as our friend Shanti on Aquarius Rising Africa. And Spooky Two, for you guys who are don't know what this is, this is a, a a rife machine, which is, I mean, you might be able to explain it better than me, Hillis, because I'm not very sciencey minded. But it's basically it's it's a it's it it's energy kind of based off of Tesla's technology that uses frequency now of course in ayurveda the three elements of life and ayurveda are breath food and frequency or vibration so it helps it, it targets um imbalances in the body whether that's a disease or an emotional block usually they're the same one and the same where it uses the well, vibration to help penetrate correct yeah it does all of that and, and a lot more i mean honestly you know because there are these experimental frequencies that I that I like to play with, and those are the ones I was using over the weekend. The experimental frequencies, and they they are really exciting. But before we get into into that, I want to really dive in into the some of the revelations I've had over the weekend. So, yes, I don't even know, guys. He hasn't told me, so <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> So, so one of the things, uh, you know, and as you know, I uh, read the sex symbols of mood, talking about all the shapes and symbolism and symbology and all that stuff. And, you know, one of the things that I found fascinating, you know, in this weekend is the infinity symbol. You know, the infinity symbol, you know, as some people call it, is a twisted circle. Mm -hmm. You know, looks like an eight. Where, you know, just. Right, we just keep going in this in, in internal loop or this infinite loop and crisscrossing and getting your wires crossed and all that other stuff. You know, it's just a twisted circle. However, the in the ancient world, the ancient place, we often see that. And the only way to really was describe it was in in this shape. So the infinity symbol is actually the symbol of DNA. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not the it's not the infinity symbol. It's just the the DNA on its side. And so in ancient cultures, they really didn't know how to really uh, talk about this or to really show this. And so when you have a civilization that didn't have the technology that we have to really see it to interpret it. This is one of those things that you do the best that you can with what you have. And right. so for those who already didn't know, now you know. Yeah. Uh, 
So the you know it's like a double meaning when you have the original meaning because the infinity symbol originally means you know inf infinite that the soul lives forever. However, the true essence of that is the circle. You know, especially if, if you want to go back to the first part of the show that Bryce and I did about the sacred symbols of Mu, part one, where we talk about the circle and what it means and how it's. Uh, the divine purpose of just the circle and how it taught the people of that civilization how to connect with creative source energy. So that was one of the revelations. <laughs> Let me show you guys, as he's saying that, I'm just making a note right here. So if you're new to the channel and you have not seen a uh, part one of our, our series on the lost continent of Mew, I will actually put both part one and part two down in the description box below. Um, and for those who are completely new, Mu is like, a, it's a civilization that we, if you're like, what the hell is this? Uh, uh, exactly, right? Exactly. Like we weren't taught about our true history. We know that now. And so this is a, a topic that a different, we're actually trying to plan our next show right now for the next Literally installment. Right so now. <laughs> we're in the middle of planning it. So there's a lot of Thanks information sweet. here. Yeah. yeah. So, I will, for those who are new, who want a continuation on what Hillis was just saying, those videos will be down in the description box below under show notes, along with Hillis's channel as well. So anyway, go ahead, Thank Hillis. You. Of course. And, and so part of my other revelation is that is the space of me receiving these frequencies and opening up to other aspects that I've forgotten that I'm now remembering. So... Are you, well, of course you are, but for those who are watching, if you are familiar with the energy of the Taurus, right? And so the energy of the Taurus is moving clockwise. So it's up and out and then back in. So it recycles the energy up, out, and back in. And so you have to understand now that we are moving into a space of a polar shift where the energy is going to shift and move in a different direction. And I was asking, well, how can I do this? How can I be able to shift my energy? And it got me thinking, well, this is how some of the ancients were able to walk on fire. They were able to uh, walk on water. They were, they were able to, to reverse the polarity of their energy. And what do I mean by that? Our heart is our own personal magnetic field. And when you begin to understand the elements and the magnetic energy and field of your own personal body, your aura, all of that, it lends to you being able to reverse it and control that energy. And when you reverse that, you then can begin to move into uh, a counter state, if you will, where you can, you know, begin to have that buffer between you and whatever element so that we can utilize that element and to be in that space. Because right now, there are, we, we were once told there's all these different energy bodies, or that the you know, emotional body, the mental body, the spirit body, this body, all these different energy bodies. It's actually just really only three energy bodies. And you have to understand each one of them. There's the present self that is ruled by the solar plexus, the, the, that state of being now, being present, being in the moment. Then there's the potential, which is ruled by the mind, you know, the foresight, the, the, every choice that is made or hasn't been made is the nervous system bridging off or the neurons bridging off to potential that connect to the presence. If I make this first, this can happen. If I make this first, that can happen. And then there's the true self, which is the heart energy. And so in that, so it's in these spaces that we then can allow for the representation of what we want to come forth. And Habitation, the coexistence of the entanglement of these energies. That's so fascinating because, yeah, it's a lot. As you're saying this, I'm thinking about the Yoga Sutras, which I actually, oddly enough, just have sitting right here from another show I did. That's weird. So, because I was talking, somebody asked me about the Siddhis and what 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 we would call that in Sanskrit is a Siddhi. What you're talking about, and so. Mm -hmm. 
the third and fourth pada of the yoga sutras guys this is a five thousand year old text kind of talk about that and what what i think the big mistake in like modern day spirituality is people are constantly trying to escape their human experience when all of these old ancient teachings are saying no in order to levitate in order to like the ancient yogis used to walk through you know the tibetan snow with just a lungi on barefoot and be fine like to be able to control the 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 elements around you and not be such caught such in that cause and effect matrix yeah. um is because you're in your body, in your DNA, you're in your experience and learning how to work with it versus escaping it. And so, yeah, the walking on fire, the levitating, on, walking on water is levitation. You know, being able to, um, there, there's a huge mistake that's made in Western yoga when they call the final resting posture Shavasana, which is not what that posture is. And that the Shavasana is a, um, what they call, it's a sixth series posture where I never want to do it because I probably wouldn't be able to do it. It's where you go into actually you control your breathing to so much to a point where you're able to get your body to go into a rigor mortis state without actually being dead and then bring it back. Right? Yeah. That's Shavasana. That's, not yeah, resting. Yeah. Not, not, resting is Sukhasana. That's Shavasana. And so so there's all these like, you know, people see this as magic, and I suppose it is to an extent, but it's really you just knowing how to be the Jesus. master of your own consciousness. Yeah, and, and actually, I I was shown how to do this. I was shown how to reverse the energy, the magnetic field. And it's like I have to practice this. And so I'm in this space of practicing this at least once a day to where I then can be able to teach how to do it. Because part of that, which you just said, is slowing down your heart rate. Mm -hmm. because you can't just you know it's not like the light switch you flip it and it goes the other direction no right. you have to harmonize the energy first yeah and then after you harmonize it slow it down then you can begin to reverse it and then there's a point where you if you and i'm nowhere near this but i can't wait till it happens is that if you get really good at it you can do clockwise and counterclockwise at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. You talk about calming on the heart rate too, because that comes with the breath as well. Because the breath, you know, as far as the, the heart, the it's, it's connected to the breathing. So the, and breathing, you guys, your breath is what we call pranayama, which is uh, prani, uh, prana is life or yama is extension, extend, extending the life's capacity through breath. And so your breathing is also tied to your nervous system. So you're, you're talking about the neurons. Like, so if you're in a panic state, it doesn't matter whether that's excitement or fear, you're going to, you're going to shallow breathe and hold your breath. Right. And so, and then the nervous system is going to react, which is going to cause the, the vital organs to react. So if you're able to, and that's why in the yoga practice, like it's so inaccurate for people to say that, you know, get comfortable or do what makes you comfortable in yoga. Cause that's not what yoga is about. Yoga is about, obviously those people have not studied this. Cause if you're, if you're going to like a yoga class and you're trying to get comfortable, then you're never going to achieve what Hillis is saying. Cause what we're doing in, in the controlled yoga room, it's like controlled demolition. You're putting your body into a stress state with a posture that's uncomfortable while at the same time, calming the breath down to calm the nervous system down and the heart down within that discomfort. And so it brings a stronger a, a attention to the body and to your power. So you become the power dominating your body and nothing else. You yeah. become the master of yourself. Yeah, I, I um, saw a, a friend of mine, actually uh, my co former co-host. Well, she's not my former, she's still my co-host. We just haven't done a show in like a year. <laughs> Um, she sent me this post the other day and it got me to think, so I challenge you guys to do it, but I do it a little bit differently. And so it was this guy that's doing this class and he says, I had this, this download. It was really interesting. And, and so I tried it and it was really amazing. Some of the stuff that happened. And what he said was that my thoughts are not real. Only I am. Yep. And he said, I want you to say that every hour, for, e for every waking hour, every day for seven days. And mind you, I haven't done it every waking hour. I'll be honest, I haven't done it. 
But what I've done was I kind of switched it a little bit because I used to have this affirmation and, and brought this back to my attention and awareness of I am master of my thoughts. Yeah. You, and it's the same thing. So crazy. It's literally second sutra of the Yoga Sutra size <laughs> is Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. That's what it is in Sanskrit. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. That's the second sutra in the first pada. And people mistranslate it. It drives me bananas. They mistranslate. They say yoga is silencing the mind. That's not what that says. That's not what yoga to do. No, no. Says. It's about right. understanding all the, the, the thoughts. Yes. And so, and it's because crazy it as you're saying that because uh, Sri Swami Chitananda, you guys, who's this is the most famous uh, commentary. There's lots of commentaries, but he kind of says something along the lines of what you just said when he's commentary on the sutras. So basically yoga chitta. So yoga is chittam is mind. Vritti is thoughts. Naroda has nothing. So we can't we can't shut our brain down. So Patanjali goes on to say 5,000 years ago, it's funny we're still talking about this today, that in order to master yourself, you have to master your thoughts. You have to realize your thoughts are not you. They're a vritti. They're an attachment. And that's it. And if you master them, then you can, like one of my favorite uh, quotes is, um, don't believe everything you think. You know, don't oh, believe yeah. Don't believe. And Sri Swami Shadidananda says kind of the same thing in one of the sutras in his commentary. He says, instead of saying, I'm hungry or I'm tired or I'm <laughs> angry, you say, my body is tired. My body is hungry. My mind is angry. So you're separating yourself, the consciousness, your the soul, detachment. Yeah. from the reaction. You're being like, we, we in yoga, we have the three, the Prakriti, Purusha, Ishvada. Prakriti is nature, your body, your experience. Purusha is like the watcher, the soul, what's experiencing it. And Ishvada is higher consciousness or God. So you become the watcher at that point where you're just watching the experience happen, right? You're not attaching to the experience. Yeah, this is a really, a really good cool segue i kid you not into let us talk about frequency let us yes, talk about let's frequency do it. Too. And, and so it's real interesting because when you're in this space you know of really experiencing the frequencies when you really know and uh, in my job i've been doing it for 61 two three days i think 62 or three days you know continuously i may have had you know, a day break, but that's really about it. I mean, a day really isn't much because he's still uh, integrating yeah. everything. Uh, but it's real fascinating because in the beginning, there was all this space of discomfort of like, oh, I'm dehydrated. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. So it's like all this, these little, these little nuances that I became aware of that was annoying. You know, the, the frustration, all of that. But after like the first two, almost three weeks of really, you know, using my particular programs for what it is that I'm working on with myself, uh, it really began to settle in. I began to settle in the energies. And yes, I have, uh, and actually it's interesting, I, I'm at a place now where I have kind of almost accepted the dehydration a little bit. Because I know I can't constantly have an IV in my arm just feeding me water all day. It's impossible. Imagine three water, three liters of water a day. I mean, that's a lot of water. You yeah. know, yeah. you feel flushing things out. And but what's really interesting is, you know, in the beginning of how I was aware of the personality shifts. And this is one of the things I thought that was really interesting. And I heard this on, on, uh, video that I saw, I believe it was last week. And it only speaks true of how when someone goes through detox or when someone is not eating the right foods or when someone's not doing right by their body, mm -hmm. they create what's called personality disorders or schizophrenia. And I hold that to be true to what we eat, what we eat by our bodies. And so when you give yourself so much of one thing, that thing takes over, yeah. hijacks the body, hijacks the system. And you don't know if that's you or if that's a parasite or whatever. And I feel that that's important to acknowledge, you know, who you are. And I, and I highly recommend for people to sit with themselves before they do anything like this. Yeah. Because it can be taxing on, on the emotional space. Taxing 
in the in the mental space, the spiritual space, the body space, it could be taxing on all levels. So if you don't know who you are at your core, then yeah, you probably will have a personality disorder. I mean, I knew what was going on, I knew what was happening. So I'm like, okay. And mind you, I've never used a frequency machine before, but I've done plant medicine, and I've done mushrooms, it's all the same. Yeah. You know, you have when you when you welcome spirit or welcome an energy into your body, when you invite that energy into your body, whether it is sugar, caffeine, whatever, you know, nicotine or, you know, plant medicine, mushrooms, whatever it is, frequencies, when you invite that into your space, you take on that energy. And you have to understand what it is and who you are. And as this unraveled, I began to really understand the personalities of everything. Yeah. You know, and then just really opened up that, that door to really get it. And I think that's one of the things that as a healer that I know how to do is really understand who is who and what is what, which is why I work at a soul level, because that's your true self. That's who you really are. And everything that you embody, everything that you feel may not be one of you. Absolutely. So, I'm yeah. going to, what you just said is so important. You guys yeah. when talking about food and I do, when I did my shadow work challenges a couple of years ago, I did a 30 day and a 60 day and I had people keep like a food journal, but not, for like the sake of what you think, like diet programs will have you do that. What I had people do is we are so used to being told what to eat. This is good for you. This isn't that we've lost the autonomy to understand like how our body is responding to the relationship with, with the thing, the, the, the inner life force you're bringing into your body, which is food. So I would have Hillis, I would have people doing the shadow work challenge, write down every single thing they like if you for breakfast, let's say, you had like scrambled eggs or like with some fruit. I would have you write yeah. down what you scrambled your eggs in. Did you put butter in there? That, yeah. Every single thing that you put, every single every element step. of you, what you were eating. And then I said, you write it all down. And then 30 to 45 minutes after you've eaten, you write down exactly how you were feeling. When I talk about, I'm not talking about just stomach ache or I'm talking about, do you have, Emotional, energy? Yeah. are you depressed? Do you feel like, because so many people don't understand that food, your reaction to food isn't just physical. It can also cause emotional issues yeah. as well. Just like cancer, just like diabetes, just like, you know, all these other illnesses, they hijack the system and create yeah. this, this dependency. And so when you have a system that is hijacked by whatever illness or disease you have, you have that. And then in order to keep that disease or illness alive, you begin to crave certain things, mostly it's sugar. It. Because you're not feeding you. You're feeding it. Right. <laughs> and so it is in that space we have to come to this, this understanding, you know, uh, of it. And so, honestly, the this what I what I'm doing with the spooky too, and what I do on the energetic level, they go hand in hand. I mean, because you know, one treats the body, and one treats the soul, the energy, you know, to help get back and restore that space. And and the experimental program that I ran this weekend, it was very interesting. Especially there was a uh, one called there was a set of three. It was called uh, Shambhala Healing. And it was fast. And mind you, <laughs> I was about to peak or just after peak of me doing my much journey. I'm like, this is perfect. I mean, this is a divine order that I'm receiving this and getting this. And then, and then this is when this whole energy technique came in that I'm practicing. I'm like, all this stuff coming in at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> oh man that's awesome well is it you know what's I, I as you're saying that too like allowing this to come in you you hit on something as well that i think people need to understand too when you were talking about sitting there and like feeling the frustration and like feeling that like i want this or i need this 
I, that is also super important for people to understand that when you get into this healing, if you're not used to it, especially you will feel oh. resistance from your mind. And what's happening, you guys, is you're from a, this is a spiritual perspective, right? Your mind is the, this isn't responsible for creating what we call the ego. Now, I think some people don't understand. Well, that's, that's what, mind or brain. Mind or brain? Yes, two different. Well, the the problem solving entity of the of the of the organ is is designed to keep you alive. And so, what we have is this. And some people get confused with ego. Like we think of egos as being someone who's like narcissistic or stuck on themselves. When I say ego in a spiritual perspective, I'm talking about the illusionary self, the false sense of self. You know what you think you are, who you think you are right? Not who you really are. And the ego, the false sense of self, your soul doesn't actually fear death. Your soul is like never afraid. It's your false sense of self that becomes afraid. And so what, cause that's what your false sense of self is what's got the mortality, not your soul. So when you are doing a spiritual practice and you are having a breakthrough or you're being pushed into your body by the practice the main thing you see, especially with beginners, is immediate resistance because they're uncomfortable. They just want to go. That's your fault sense of self, creating excuses and thoughts that you're attached to to get you away from the experience because that experience is what's creating the awareness yeah. of mortality to the false sense of self. And that's so important. I had a student the other day, and again, that's why in like a spiritual practice, we put you in really uncomfortable controlled environment so you can challenge that right so in a controlled environment you're able to challenge that um mind that mind stuff and i had a student the other day hillis that in my classes i teach her classes and after the class was over she's drenched in sweat and she goes i realized in the middle of class that i don't have to do what my mind is telling me to do and i was like bing 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 that's spirituality 101 congratulations you just you don't you're in that really in a controlled environment you're in that deep squat you're shaking and sweating and your mind's negotiating to get you out of it but you go no it's cool i'm gonna stay because my soul's okay here my body yeah. might you know it's that resistance right and i love no, it but you know it's interesting and, and and i'm gonna share this because this is what came up um so part of in my journey over the weekend is that there's Ever since I stopped running and, you know, being athletic and, and, you know, running the way that I used to, you know, and anytime that I didn't want to do it, something always happened. And it was always with my right knee, but I attributed it to this accident. I don't know if it was that. No, well, yeah, it was technically it was an accident because my friend was being goofy. Uh, where I ran into a fence, flipped over the fence with my bike, gashed my knee, my right knee, and it was deep trauma. Yeah. In that space, and didn't realize. Oh well, you know, just what it is. Shake it off and just get up and and go on and about my business. But didn't realize that over the years that when there was when I when my body was tired or when something was tired, you know, for example, I remember me uh, when there's uh, cross country me. Mind you, I ran varsity for all four years. Yeah. After freshman to senior. That's how good I was. And because you could only run varsity if you was a junior or senior. But I ran varsity as a freshman. Yeah. So and when there was a couple of meets, and I think it happened once almost every year, it was always the opening meet. So actually, you know, this year was the opening meet. And I, no one liked it because it was the opening meet, the longest one. It's like, oh, I just hate it. Because the varsity have to run three miles. Yeah. And none of us was really up to speed, you know, because we didn't practice over the summer. We were just teenagers off right. goofing up. Right. And so... You know, first meet of the year, and about maybe almost a little more than two miles in, there was this divot, and I'm like, "Ooh!" And my mind can like trick and say, "Yeah, what if I purposely get yeah. no into the divot?" <laughs> and so, 
you know, and that was like my story of like, if I didn't want to do something, you know, what would happen? And then later, on, you know, and I purposely stepped into divot, you know, not injuring my ear. And so that's like, oh, it's just a little, you know, slow me down, slow me down because I was tired. I didn't want to do it, but yeah. I couldn't say no. And so, but then I thought later there was this other thing, but I really wanted to do it. And it was my maybe third, fourth wrestling meet. And I was supposed to go to work, but I didn't want to go to work. You know, working for Jewel as a bad boy, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go. Yeah. I wanted, I, put, I went to my wrestling meet instead. <laughs> and so, halfway through my match, and obviously the guy who I'm listening to is more experienced than I am. And he did sort of sort of like a fireman's carry something, you know, something. And how he did it, I don't think he did it properly because I landed on my knee and I hurt my knee. Same knee, right knee. You know? And I'm like, what the heck That's is this? That's not a coincidence. No, but this was something I wanted to do. Yeah. But, but because I didn't want to do something else, this was my thing to do. So this was, so this has always been a trigger. And I'm like, okay, I see how this has carried. And so when your body is in these spaces of holding these, these storms, you know, these memories, the, this energy, what is it that we're really and honestly telling ourselves in this space, you know, you have to really pause and think about it. It gave me a lot of pause to think about. So throughout the years, you know, when I was doing things that I loved, and mind you, after I graduated high school, you know, then I became like, you know, gym rat, and, you know, I didn't have all these knee issues. I mean, every now and again, and that was literally from overexertion, but it wasn't anything related to things that I didn't want to do. At least, you know, that's, story that was shown to me yeah so I just find it fascinating in, in these pockets you know the stories that we tell ourselves and so you know it, it's it's a beautiful uh entanglement that we untangle let me i actually as you're saying this i i love these stories because you guys know <laughs> if you've been with me for a long time you know that um spirituality and exercise go hand in hand because the body is going to be your biggest teacher. Let me know if you can hear this, Hillis. I downloaded this from TikTok. It's brilliant. 95% of all men and women over the age of 30 will never sprint again for the rest of your life. Oh, aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. You know, the more aggressively we seek comfort, the faster we age. We seek comfort. We regulate the temperature in our environment. We regulate the temperature in our vehicles. We regulate temperature in our offices. We like to work out in an air-conditioned gym. We like to lift until we just feel a little bit of pain and then stop. We don't like to be marginally hungry so you eat the first peg. That's completely nonsense. Human body is meant to drive. It's actually meant to strengthen under stress. If you don't load your bones, they don't strengthen. If you don't actually tear a muscle, it won't grow. If you don't challenge the abuse system, it will weaken. By not challenging ourselves, by not exposing ourselves to different thermal temperatures, it's very good to submerge yourself in cold water. You know, cold plunging is a trend that's really, really catching on, but it has a lot of validity for people that can't afford or don't want to get into a cold plunge. You can take a cold shower. It's that, that, do you, you heard that? Totally heard yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. He's, he's, he's the truth, right? He's talking about, and I, I listened to that. I went out and talked to my boyfriend about it, you know, because we know in the yoga world, like, people who are in their 60s and 70s who look like they're 30, 40 years old. And it's because they challenge their body. And by challenging their body, what they're really doing is challenging their false sense of self. And the, 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 the body is a representation of what's happening with the mind. And so if you're gaining that control of the mind, you start to look better. You start to look younger. You have more vitality. Yeah. You're not enslaved to your own thoughts. You know, and, and Patanjali basically says being enslaved to your own thoughts is what keeps you on a karmic wheel anyway. That's what keeps you coming back. And that samskaric, you know, so if you can start yeah. to master that, you know. It's it's all about going back to the familiar. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting because, you know, a friend of mine, you know, she was telling me at one point, you know, 
how relationships, how they kind of like grow, evolve, and then they're like, oh, okay, they're done. But then during that time of separation, you know, one person grows, the other person grows, and they can come back together. And I think that that's really a, a fascinating story because, you know, you have this intention of, of growth. And in that space of growth, you know, what are we growing? And, and I know right now for me, yeah, I want to work out. Yeah, I want to do these things. I want to do all of the things that my body used to. I mean, heck, I was 35 and I was 36, still running, jumping, kicking. And I mean, heck, I mean, I was more active in my 30s than I wasn't like in my 20s. 100%. I agree. Listen, I only I only run a couple of times a week just to flush my blood. At 41, I typically, when I go for a run, will run 8 to 10 miles. When I was in my early 20s, I would only run a couple of miles. But I think I think it's your perspective too, right, Hillis? Like I think oh, yeah. you're looking at exercise as a way to punish yourself or a way to get skinny, your body's going to react into in a very aggressive way. But if you're looking at it as a chance to explore your life, explore your vitality, challenge your mind as something spiritual versus something up as a punishment, it, it, it creates a different energy around the exercise. Yeah, it does. I mean, I could tell you the times when I when I was consistent with it. Yeah, it was always in that space, especially man, my my uh, personal trainer. Every Saturday, he would kill me because my job was already. I was in the gym four times a week, and I would go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, back to back. And then have Friday off, and then I would get up Saturday morning to do my two hour workout. Mind you, I would do the first hour for me, me, and then take a break, and then I would have my trainer. We would do boot camp. Mind you, it was me and maybe I don't know five other people. Sometimes we have a full class of ten, but he will look at me and give me different modified exercises to do more difficult exercises. I look at him, I say, are you crazy? I say, no, yeah. I know you can do it. I'm like, I mean, I'm in, I'm in boot camp class doing one leg push-ups and doing this and that. I'm like, well, and that's, and that's a good trainer's job, though. Like, as a teacher, like, I had to do that this past uh, Sunday in my class. I had to pull a person, one of my students, because I can tell she's like skimming the surface. Like she's gotten to this place of complacency in her practice. And I know she can go further to keep challenging herself. So I literally had to sit on the floor and like move her body just like a half an inch deeper into a posture to trigger that, that drop again into friction in the body. Yeah. And so I, yeah, that's what that's for. That's, yeah, 100%. yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I do understand that, but and I, and I guess this goes back to the whole practice of frequency too, because when you're in this space and, and honestly sp working with the spooky too, there's sixty thousand different frequencies. You can, yeah. it's like this space, you know, that I get like super excited because oh yeah, there's one for astral travel, or there's one for astral protection, or there's one for for this, uh, you know, healing. Oh, there's one for this. I'm like, you know, it's like overwhelmed of excitement. But then I have to to reel it back in and say, like, okay, what is it that I'm asking for right now? Is it a space to you know, really connect with the body, which which I am connected with? But there's what aspect needs to be completely cleared out, and so. You know, at some point, I, I will may go deeper into this aspect of my story. <laughs> um, but I'm holding it close for now because there's certain things that I've noticed uh, that are like, wow, okay, that's, oh, wow, that's interesting. And so when you work with frequencies and energy, the work that it is frequency also is just a different form of frequency. It's more like a vibration, more like a resonance. The spooky too is almost like uh, a counter energy yeah. for that. And sometimes it even matches that energy and frequency. What I, and what I mean, say that is, is there's, there's a, especially when you're using the remote feature, there's, there's 
a killing aspect and this healing aspect. And so the killing aspect is the opposite frequency from what I feel. The opposite vibration of the thing that you're targeting in your system. Yeah. yeah but you true. also, it's like the underlying current. Yeah. But yeah. you have that actual frequency to target that thing in your body. So you have like two frequencies targeting the same thing. And it's these two frequencies that initiate the clearing, the, the nourishing and clearing it out of your system. You have to that get rid of the old karma first. The old yeah, karma. Exactly. That's, um, and that's, I'm, you, I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, that's part of it. My teacher, Nenda, used to say, new body is make making. New body is making. But what my boyfriend will laugh and say was what he didn't tell you was old body got to break first before new body yeah. can make. Right. You've got it. Well, when it comes to patterning, right? Like we have these patterns that we, and so in order to create new patterns, you've got to get rid of the old patterns. Right. And yeah. so that's got to happen first. I'm so glad too. like, we talk about astral tra trajectory, astral, you guys, what he's right. Like this is in the symmetries as well. You spend years working on the first and second pata before you even get to the Sidhis. You've got to know yourself first. You got to yeah. know. And I see that a lot with spirituality, Hillis, like people who are unwilling to look at their selves. Instead, they want to go to like the fun stuff, like astral projection or all that kind of stuff. But That's I see, not easy to get to, though. No, and it, but I see it as them trying to disassociate from the real work. Like once you do the real work first and understand, get in your body and understand your own patterns and your own blockages and your own karma, which all karma is, is cause and effect, guys. It's all it is. It's just work. And once you can handle that, then you have a better grasp on reality when it comes to the the fun stuff. Um, you know, it's it's yeah. That, yeah. Because what you talked about earlier, I mean, right now, I mean, we we're taking a break now, but I'm still practicing as as much as I can. You know, I'm studying telekinesis right now. Okay, and that's not easy. You know, I I have I'm happy that I have the fundamentals of me being a psychic medium because I have to have in order to do this kind of work. But what you said earlier is, you know, really about, darn it, I lost the thought about... Oh, Karma work. No, 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 it was way before that. It was something you said way before that, and it was to the, the degree of really understanding the body mm -hmm. and, and really understanding the mind, really understanding that space, because right now, like I said, you know, with me studying telekinesis, you know, some of the stuff that we, ah, there it is, some of the stuff that we embark on, some of the stuff that we journey towards can be physically dangerous. Oh, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, just like the technique that I was given the, over the weekend, I could, you know, if it's not done right, you could kill yourself. Oh, okay. yeah. That yeah. happens. That happens with, in India all the time. People black out and practice. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, I think, you know, when you were talking about the, what was it, the, the, the yoga pose, the, oh, geez, the yoga pose where people saw your heart rate down. What was that? Oh, Shavasana. Yeah. That yeah, that's so, that's why it's six series. It's, it's, and only one person living on the world in this world right now has actually completed it. So it's so comp. Yeah. You don't learn that in beginners, the beginners class. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the stuff, and, and I'm and I'm and, and I'm going to be in a space. I don't know, maybe in about a year, where I could be able to teach people some of this advanced stuff because it's not, it's it's not easy because you have to have a foundation. If you don't have a strong foundation, you can't get to all the fun stuff. And mind you, there are some people that just jump out into the fun stuff and have and have control over it. You know, that's amazing that some people can do that. But then there, but you have to understand that with us talking about what we talked about, one of the reasons we wanted to talk about the first civilization that moved because they were doing this stuff, they were sharing this with the minority of other people. It's important for us to really begin to embrace that because don't get me wrong, I don't, I'm not a big fan of religion, but you have to understand that religion was here first, yeah. and it was here from the civilization of moved, how they were teaching others to understand the infinite energy that is creative consciousness. And then because of the dogmas, the dogma, the, ex the 
extravagance of religion, you know, where people are making money and, and doing it for the money and doing it for all the wrong reasons, then both the energy of spirituality, but spirituality is always been present. It's just never called that. And so when you take that energy and sit with it and be present with it, you then can understand the body. Yeah. Because yeah. our teacher, we are our own teachers. Because if you allow yourself to really sit in the space of understanding who you are, and really sit in the space of really understanding what this is, as a teacher, you begin to be the student of yourself. And then the learning of self, because the, the trueness of this is as energy beings, as a soul, we can manipulate energy with a thought, with a frequency, with a vibration. But when we are in a density, a third density or fourth or fifth density energy, it's, it's a bit more challenging to manipulate a denser energy. And one of the things that I find fascinating, I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but I just, you know, for, for the anime fans out there who watch anime, uh, for uh, a great example of this, actually, you should just watch any anime, uh, Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or any of those that have a spiritual undertone to them, or even uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, if you watch any of those you have to understand that they go through the proper training. And the reason why I was going to talk about Dragon Ball Z is because if you ever watch Goku, he always trains under a heavier density. He always trains it's in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a denser gravity because if you train at that density, if, that, if you train at a, at, a, at a stronger density or gravity, you then, like you just said, have that resistance to build up. You need to build up. That's what that guy was saying. So the physical matches the spiritual with that. And I'm glad you brought that up too with like the safety factor. I actually talked about this with Catherine. And this is one of the issues I have with like fake spirituality and like the fake yoga world. In traditional yoga, we work off of what's called the yoga karanta. And this is like a manual of how the asanas, because the asanas are alchemy and they're the, the postures, right. they're alchemy and they're, they're a prescription. You should never be going to a yoga class where the teacher is choreographing it there and then. That's not proper yoga. So the proper yoga is consists of six different series. The first being yoga chikitsa. Yoga Chikitsa, our primary series, is Yoga Chikitsa. That means physical therapy. So before you even get into second series, which is nervous system therapy, you, the ancient yogis, were telling us, you have to be physically able. You, you, we got to train you. It's like, it's like um, the karate kid. Like he, you have to physically train your body to handle the harder stuff, to handle the deep pranayama, the start stopping of the heart. If your physical body is out of shape, it's, you're not going to be able to safely do this. The body has to be, it's a temple. It has to be fine-tuned to be able to even feel the responses in the subtle body, to feel the energy of Vayu moving through the organs, to detox yeah. the organs so that they can actually communicate with you. And so, and this is super, super important. And you see this in a lot of traditional like legitimate spiritual practices. You see that where you, you know, I know in the world today, and I feel like this is coming from darker forces where they, a lot of times the darker forces will take a really good idea and twist it and manipulate it. Like, like body a circle. Like a circle, right. Like a circle, like <laughs> circling back, no pun intended to where we began. But like, we look at like the body positivity movement. You should always love your body. Even if you're overweight, you should absolutely, but you should love your body enough and be humble enough to work on your weaknesses and to use that resistance to get you stronger. But to sit there and say, no, I'm, I'm, you're at that point, you're negating, you're putting a limit on yourself as to what you can actually do. And it's, and not to mention it, like one thing that drives my boyfriend crazy is we see in this body positivity movement, we see people who are like 400 pounds doing uh, pictures of them doing like a yoga posture that at 400 pounds if you keep doing that you're gonna break your bones like that's not good you know it's it's that's just reality and um and so i love that you brought that it's very important and we talk even the cassiopeians talk about that like with everything going on in our world right now 
everything in the air, everything that, that we're not consenting to that's being put on us, the way to combat that is resistance training. A frequency. And actually the frequencies that I have help with building tolerance with that, yeah. you know? And, and, yeah. and I'm just going to say this one thing that I find it fascinating every time I do it. So every time I, I may incorporate it more into a, a regular practice, but every time I do a journey, you know, anytime I do inner work with the plant teachers, medicine, mushroom teachers, I uh, do put in earplugs because I can hear what's yeah. going on in here. The And I may have mentioned this before, but it's the, the different tones, the different frequencies. There's, you know, every organ has a tone. Every All the cells have a particular frequency. When the cell is dying, when the cell is being born, when when the cell is at its peak, when and the cell is doing this, and when the and the and the loudest thing you hear is the is the heart. But when you sit, you can hear the other tones. Yeah, and it's fascinating when you be able, when you can hear your own body and like and when you get used to hearing your own body like this, you can tell when something is off just by hearing your body. I mean, granted. Your body is going to tell you anyway because of how you feel in your body. But by then, it might be a little too late. You right. know, you may have to seek emergency help because the, the the physical symptoms is the last thing to let you know something's off. Yeah. As opposed to when you incorporate listening to your body in a regular practice, you can tell when something's off. And then, so this is what we talk building up resistance, having a relationship with the body, knowing the body. So then that way you know when something's off. Like, oh, something's not right. Or I gotta take this out. Or something's not right. And, and just as an example of this, um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a little get together, friend's birthday. And uh, I had way too much sugar. I mean, and my God, I, I, was, I cut back a lot, but then it's like, oh, the next day I was so physically like, uh, Food hangovers are the worst when you're used to like watching. Yeah. They're worse yeah. than alcohol hangovers, aren't they? <laughs> They're so bad. Food hangovers are so bad. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, I'm like, eh, what am I going to do? So then I just, you know, drink water, aloe vera juice, you know, flush it out. And I was fine. Like, yeah, I was excited about my. Like, yeah. That well, you notice that that's that subtle, a subtle body response. Something happened to me when my core got really strong. Like when I first got really strong, like I've always had a pretty flat stomach, but a really strong core. I one day noticed this was years ago. I had like a sports bra on, and I noticed I just eaten something. I noticed that I could actually see the food digesting through my stomach. You know how you see a mom's a baby kicking a mom's stomach? I could actually yeah. see it. I remember asking my friends, like, "Can you see that?" She, you could only see it from my perspective, but it was like vibrating as the food was moving, passing through the digestive tract. And that came from the refinement of, of my practice and the refinement of my body and the fact that I actually became aware that I could just look down and like see what the organs were. <laughs> it was crazy. It's the craziest shower, you know? And I have lower back issues. I've been very on. And I tell my, I have students all the time. They try to like, my back hurts. I'm like, I've had back surgery. I got five herniated discs right now. I don't have back pain. If I do start to have back pain, I know that I'm feeling a molodara issue and I need to strengthen the core, strengthen the body to support that molodara, and the pain goes away. And so you stop using these excuses when you realize they're not excuses. It's just your body communicating with you to tell you how, how what your emotional state really is so that you can fix it instead of going to big, um, we'll say big schmarmacy, the schmarma, schmarma schmutical company since youtube likes to tag that word we'll create a new word um for more fake stuff more fake schmills that they're giving you that is again an energy right a chemical that you're giving a relationship to you know so it's it's um yeah we we see you big shmarma we see you <laughs> but the thing is you know what i what i appreciate about this there's actually there you know thanks to ronald royal rice sorry royal rice 
he there's frequencies for everything and yeah. there's nothing that a frequency cannot heal or fix quote unquote you know not saying that anyone is, is broken or ill we just need the proper you know guidance the proper energies to yeah. be more on our resonant field so yeah my 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 experience with spooky too has been both physical and spiritual because they're one and the same i love that i tell it to my students all the time i'm like you know when people first start coming into a spiritual practice they're coming from a world where typically they've beaten their body up for like egotistical purposes and then they'll swing the pendulum all the way to the other side and become so disconnected from the physical body to try to heal the spiritual but then you come back to that middle and you realize the shiva and the shakti the shiva being the the consciousness the shakti being the creation of consciousness aka your body are doing a tango together and they're always and once this shakti is done the next shakti is created and that's what thought says in the emerald tablets he says you know spirit you you are a spirit you, you are you can't kill a soul like you're an immortal spirit that's what you already are but when you're only in spirit form when you're not in a body or a physical manifestation of a shakti you don't know life because you don't know death so when you come into this mortality whichever mortality whatever dimension that is sure. you're coming into this experience of resistance and with that resistance and that net understanding of mortality there comes the spark of creation so yeah. any type of of struggle that you're in regardless of what that is if you think oh god i got bad knees i can't do that no 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 your knees are giving you a gift as as to, they're t they're trying to tell you something you know, I'm probably not to toot my own horn. I feel like I'm a really good backbending teacher because I have had back issues where your weakness is actually becomes your strength because that's where the resistance lies. And that with resistance, as that guy was saying, that's how you get stronger. And that's that frequency. It actually absolutely is. So Hillis, um, I'm going to have all of all of your spooky two links down in the description box below. Is there... Um, I'm going to put your YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff. If someone wants to work specifically with you as a healer, what do they do? So just go to the tab link in the description below that will uh, have a list of all my websites. And then there will be a link that says uh, to work with me, client form to work with me. You start the process there. Or you can just simply email me and we can set up a consultation call to see what it is that I can be of service to you with, to be of better service, to assist you, whatever it is that your soul is asking for. Because keep in mind, I work on a soul level and then anchor that into the physical. Now, what what email do you want people to use to contact you at? Because I know I have tons uh, of emails for you, so. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm with the right one. <laughs> my Hillis at HillisPew.com. I thought so, but I just want to make sure you guys, <laughs> Hillis is like a jack of all, like he does so much. He's He's my friend. You, I kind of, I call you like my agent too, because you like help me with all these sponsorships. So, like, I'm like this dude does. He has an email for, which is so organized of you to have like an email for everything. But knowing me, I'd probably put the wrong email down there. So, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so you guys, and and for the our viewers watching, I know you eventually want to use the spooky rife machine in your sessions. Are you able to do that now? Or are you still going to wait for a while to do to incorporate um, that? I, 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 I'm going to have some people starting next month. So so if you guys want to know about how to start with with me using the spooky dude just for you, let me know um, because it's it's very fascinating and how the remote feature and how the distance that it covers because it's quantum entanglement. So you know if I just have a DNA sample, you know hair, fingernail, you know send it out and then we can get started. I mean there uh, there is a fear associated with this. Of course, <laughs> and we could talk about that as well. So I mean, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I know that, and you obviously, guys, if you're if you just want Hillis to help you, regardless, despite Spooky Two or not, you that's been your jam for a long time now. So he can do other things outside of Spooky as well. It just, I guess, it'll depend on like the prescription for each person. You laugh when, we, when, yeah. I, when I talk about like hair and nails. You know, Hillis, you live in Florida. I live from the South. I always think like voodoo right away. And I'm like, but no, this is a good voodoo. This is like the good stuff. No, no, no. This is, this is, this is for nourishing the body. You yeah. reconnect and we build an energy. I mean, because I mean, I'm a psychic medium. I'm a Reiki practitioner. But what I love to do is the Lamorian light energy work. That's like my favorite thing to do right now because being banded, I can 
you know, give someone a reading and help change their lives. But when I do energy work on somebody, I witness a transformation. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that that is something that is really rewarding for me as a teacher too, to see students like, you know, you can take a you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. To see somebody actually act actively participate in their own healing is yeah. really rewarding. And okay. um you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's an energy doesn't understand time or, you know, energy is not, it's not co conditioned to the linear time that we perceive here on the planet. So that's why somebody, I had the weirdest experience once my, one of my really good friends up in Canada, he's a Reiki master as well. This was years ago before I was on YouTube and I was driving down the street here in Atlanta and I had this like thought, like Chris wants to do Reiki on you. And so I text him. I was like, dude, I he goes, he goes, yeah, I was asking you. I was telepathically asking you if I can do Reiki on you from afar. It's like, I'm trying to practice doing it from afar. And I was like, no shit, dude. I was like, that was so weird. Cause I literally heard Chris wants to do Reiki on you. And I was thinking, of course he can. Like I trust him with my life and I text him and I was like, he was like, no, I was asking you telepathically. <laughs> I, was like, I was just confirming with text. Cause it was such a random thought that I, you know, it, it, so that just your energy has no it has no no it has no distance yeah no boundaries i yeah. mean it's fun <laughs> it's energy that's why we can still be affected by stories of people that live thousands of years ago and feel that emotion of their story because it's that's just how we are it's how cool we are as humans so well i thank you hillis this has been such a fun conversation my two favorite yes. things to talk about in this world i love being petty and researching historical people and gossiping about them. Everybody knows that. I love to gossip about these historical people. It's fantastic. Um, I just got off this morning, guys, with Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. And I was talking about how in the late 19th century, Pope Leo XIII allowed some scholars into the secret Vatican library to look at some stuff. And I was like, one of those historians went straight for the diaries, which is exactly what I would have done too, is just go read the diaries. And I could just see them now, like this historian reading these diaries, be like, y'all ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> like, check this stuff out, you know? And that's what it is. <laughs> All history is, is just gossip, it's academic gossip. But then my other favorite thing to talk about is spirituality and the human body and how unbelievably lied to we've been when it comes to what we're actually capable of and how my again my some of my favorite instagram people to follow there's these people that are like try like start they're starting like marathon running which i think any type of exercise can be incorporated into spirituality it doesn't necessarily have to be yoga and there's this one girl who's massively overweight but she started her running journey and i love her page so much um, if I can, I'll find it now. I can tag it in the description box below, guys, because I can't remember her name because I'm just so impressed by her because, of course, she's the slowest runner. But every week she posts more updates and you can just, and I just have so much respect for her for being at a place where this is so difficult. You know, it's just so difficult for her. But she's out there and she's doing it. And that is, it makes me emotional. Like that is, that shows you the power of a human being. Yeah. And that's what you are. You are you are resilient, and you know, yeah, it's hard. It's hard for. I will tell you, even for the for people who are overweight and are struggling with whatever exercise. Guess what? It's hard for people who aren't overweight. As Hillis just said, they give us harder. They're trying to get us all to a place where we're feeling resistance. So it's hard for everyone, and that's what makes us human. And we understand each other. And there's humility with that as well. So anyway, thank you. This has been so cool. <laughs> I want to yeah. do it again because I, I love this topic so much. I could totally nerd out with you forever on this topic. So, um, guys, let us know in the comment section, like, if this has sparked an interest in you or if you're starting to view. Actually, Hillis, can we give our viewers, if they want some, like, things, like you said, work on things, like, things we can work on. I'm going to give one, and then I want you to give one to our viewers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to challenge you, viewers. Whatever type of exercise you do, whether that's going for walks, for runs, bar class, yoga class, when you start to feel that fiery burn in your body and your mind's negotiating with you to stop, I want you to try to drop your consciousness into the area where you feel the burn and explore it and stay. Yeah. That's going to be my challenge to you guys. And mine is if you meditate or if you have a walking meditation, whatever form that you do, or even if you are 
one of those people who like to listen to music when you meditate, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. And, and instead of using headphones, use earplugs when you go for your walk. Or when you sit in meditation, use earplugs. So that way you get attuned to listening to your body. Listen to it in a whole new, unexplored way. Trust me, it will be annoying in the beginning. Because <laughs> that but, ego, but, that false sense of self doesn't want to die. Right, but as you get used to it, you begin to enjoy the little symphony that's playing inside here. Because your music, your vibration, and everything. And anytime where there's a vibration, there's music. There's that energy. There's that space. For you to connect with, I will, I will, I will hear, hear that. That's where the Alm comes from, guys. The Alm of yoga, which means God, because Patanjali said God has a begin doesn't have a beginning or an end. It's a vibration, so Alm has no beginning or end. And if you go out into nature, and I'm talking like deep into nature where you can't hear the cars, where your cell phone doesn't work, and you just sit silently, guess what you hear? Alm coming from you coming from the plant life, that's all you'll hear. So I hear, hear that. <laughs> that is absolutely accurate. So yeah, I'm so, I could just keep talking forever, you guys. Like, yeah. you, I'm just giving you guys homework until you're, you're blue in the face. So let us know your questions down in the comment section below. Both the light and the dark use the same tools for spiritual enlightenment. But one of the main differences, besides the fact that the light doesn't hurt people and the darkness does, but one of the biggest differences between the two paths is that the light will always share what, it, what it's learned and the darkness won't. So we always want to share with you guys our experiences and help anybody along their journey of, of discovering why you choose you you chose as i like to say i think human should not be an, a noun i think human should be a verb you're humaning right now so um why your soul chose to create that shakti that experience of humaning um so anyway you guys i guarantee you you didn't come here to human just to be an accountant like i guarantee you that's not that's not why you came here <laughs> so so anyway any parting words tell us Just simply be you and enjoy the frequency that you live in. Absolutely. Don't let anyone steal that sparkle, baby. So, all right, you guys, we will talk to you later. Everything you need to know is in the, the description box below. Bye, everybody. <laughs>